accepted for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. All right, that's them now. That's sitting upon thrones. Judgment is given. And they were beheaded for witnessing for Christ and for the word of God. Two things that they lost their head. Now losing their head would denote two things. Martyrdom, the taking of their lives forcibly for the name of Jesus. It would also denote them losing their headship or their carnality of self yeah. and letting Christ yeah. be their head. Yeah. But they lost their head. They were beheaded. Wow. Whether you use that spiritually or naturally, whether you use it in both manners, an overcomer, a saint of God, one that sits upon the throne with, with Christ must lose their headship. They're beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and they uh, they had not worship. That another qualification. They had not worship the beast, and we'll have to get into that's the subject. Neither his image, that's the subject. Neither had received his mark, that's the subject. Upon their foreheads, they upon their are in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These that sat on the throne. This is an overcomer because that's promised to an overcomer earlier in the book of Revelation, to him that overcometh. Now, but he said, but the rest of the dead, all that are in the graves of the just and the unjust, the rest of the dead live not again. They didn't live again until the thousand years were finished. But now stop right there, because that ends that thought. Don't take up. This is the first resurrection. That's what I get you confused right there. No, no, don't take that up, because that's not the first resurrection. See, it couldn't be the first resurrection, uh, because there was a resurrection, Matthew 27, 52, 53. Uh, that was a resurrection if you're going to be bringing people out of the grave. So, so you'll have to say that they that reign with Christ, rule with Christ, beheaded for the witness of Jesus, that was the first resurrection. That was the first ones that their soul was made alive. They were resurrected, soul, spirit, and body, see, and transformed, all right? The first, and, and of course, the, the, the resurrection, someone said, well, when does the first resurrection start if you're applying it to the overcomer, to the ones that rule with Christ and reign with Christ, when does it start? It starts with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because this is where the soul is resurrected and the spirit is resurrected. The soul does not receive life quickening life, the Holy Ghost life, until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you're converted, you are changed by faith in the Word of God and by confession. But your soul is not quickened and your soul is not made alive in the first resurrection because you are still a converted person. You're not, you're not quickened uh, as the Holy Ghost quickens you. Um, so you're not resurrected. But when the Holy Ghost comes in, you are resurrected. You're quickened. Resurrection means quickening, bringing forth. The soul coming to life. The soul doesn't do that until the Holy Ghost comes in. And I can give you a scripture. You can write it down. And we'll go there later And if you want to discuss it. Ephesians 1 and 13. Paul said, But after that you heard the word of truth, you believed, and it goes on to say, And you were sealed, you were sealed after that you heard the word, and it was the gospel of your salvation, then you believed, then you were sealed. See, when you believe, 
and you hear, you're converted. But then after that, you're sealed. The sealing of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is separate from being converted and confessing that Christ is the Lord. Well, see, that's a separate experience. I know the Church of Christ teaches that, that that's in water baptism, but there's no evidence of that in the Scripture. But you're sealed with a Holy Spirit of promise, with, with the Holy Ghost. <coughs> so, all right, let's go take verse now, five. This, now link, link, this is the first resurrection, following verse four, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. See, that is the first resurrection. Living and reigning with Christ a thousand years. Now verse 6. Blessed and holy then is he that hath part in the first resurrection, beginning with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and ending with the change of your body from mortal to immortality. The first resurrection begins or the Holy Ghost ends with your body being changed from mortal to immortal. That, that's where it ends. All right? Blessed and holy is he that hath part, Brother George. Yes, Brother Marlo. Verse number six and verse number four is the same. Yes, verse number four and verse number six is the same. Yes, that little, in, that, in, that intervening there was just where it shows you what the dead happened to the dead that were not beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God. They were not overcomers. And they were just or unjust. They went to the grave and they were justified to resurrect. They went to the grave and they were unjustified to share life on the earth. But they went to the grave. It was just put in there. But blessed and holy then is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Verse 6. On such the second death so Brother Ferris said, are there two deaths? You know, if there's two resurrections, are there two deaths? Uh, there is, because you use Ephesians 2 and 1 right here, showing that you lived in a graveyard before you came to Jesus Christ and received your resurrection. You lived in a graveyard. Your soul was in a graveyard. You lived in death. But you, Ephesians 2 and 1, hath he quickened, where were you? When he quickened you, where were you? You were dead. We well, wasn't out in the grave dead, walking around on earth, having a job, doing your thing, living on this earth. But you were dead. You were dead to God. You were dead to God. You because you were dead in trespasses and sins. That was your tomb. The tomb of trespasses and sins was where you were. And you were dead in there. And you had no life until you were quickened. Then if you now, with life, being quickened, you don't lose that life by sin. By sin. Sin is the only thing that can destroy you and the life of God be removed from you so that you don't destroy the life of God because God is eternal. The life of God in you leaves you and leaves you dead again. Because when the life of God moves out of you, if, you're, if you were dead once, you're dead again. When that, when that life moves out, uh, you're dead. Because there, there's no life then. Even if you're living in the natural life, but you're dead in trespasses and sins. That's the second death. And everyone that dies and does not become an overcomer and live in Christ so that your soul and body and spirit is preserved blameless 